traces of planes in the sky. Um, but I kind of expected to see somebody here, you know, a cargo ship or a fishing boat or uh, something. But there's nothing. There's still nothing. If I hadn't received an email from my wife this morning, I could well think that I was the last man on earth. 71st day of solitude for the 18 skippers of the Vendée Globe. A thousand miles away from the New Zealander, the quartet Amedeo, Boissier, Rura, and Wilson are preparing to cross the Cape Horn overnight in a solid southern high depression with 50 knots wind, heavy rains, rough sea, typical of the Horn. There's a mix of apprehension, of excitement. We're very dependent on the weather files, which have improved tremendously these last hours, but nevertheless, we're apprehensive. Apprehensive and nervous because of where we are. It's so uncommon. I don't think I'm going to live up this Cape Horn crossing as a, a beginner who's crossing the Cape Horn for the first time and who's thrilled about it. I think it's going to be a little painful and certainly tense. What can I say? At midday, only 95 miles was separating our two leaders who are about to find muscular and winter-like conditions for their ascent to Les Sables d'Olonne. A long leg on starboard, ideal for Alex Thompson, who will put his only foil to use. Guaranteed suspense till the very end. But uh, I'm hoping I'm going a bit faster than, than uh, Bank Populaire at the moment and hopefully make a few miles in the, in the next few hours. Been working hard the last couple of days in the lighter breeze. It's uh, not not easy with uh, with an anemometer just uh, just there, but um, hey, it's not too bad. I'm getting enough sleep, eating well, feeling good shape, ready for the last run in. Give it my all and keep fingers crossed. Hello everyone, welcome to the Vendée Live show. Today, Sunday the 15th of January, just beginning the 71st day on the water. Well, just 100 miles now separating Armel Leclerc and Alex Thompson. We're all on the edge of the seats, work, trying to work out who's going to come in first. We're going to find that out in just a few days' time. Current ETA still Thursday, January the 19th. Well, we say uh, welcome uh, to the studio today. I have a studio guest. Uh, Hubert Le Monnier from uh, Race Control, One Day Globe Race Control. Hubert, welcome. Hi, Ali Will. Thank you for having me today. Very happy to be here. Thanks It's great to have you. <laughs> and also returning to the show is uh, none other than Dee Kafari, 2008 One Day Globe competitor, the first woman to sail solo around the world non-stop in both directions, part of Team SCA in the Volvo Ocean Race. The list goes on. Welcome, Dee. Hi there. Great to be back. Good to have you back, Dee. Um, well, other than the shrinking gap between Armel and Alex, the news today is that there's a quartet of skippers all approaching Cape Horn. They've got big wins and big seas. Fabrice Amadeo in 11th place. He's leading that group today. He's around 200 miles from Cape Horn. We spoke to Fabrice today. Here's what he had to say. I'm uh, 200 miles from the Cape Horn. I have uh, 25 knots, sometimes uh, more than 40 knots. I have uh, C3 and uh, three reefs in the main sail because uh, I don't want to take risks. I don't want to break anything uh, now. Uh, I am uh, 200 miles from my dream or from my well, uh, the Cape the Cape Horn, so I want to to, to face face to to keep to face face. It's an amazing moment for me because it's my first uh, Cape Horn, and uh, after one month in the in the south, it's a great moment. But uh, because of the wind, uh, I feel a little bit stressed, and uh, I don't I don't realize that uh, I will uh, run the Cape Horn in a few hours. Uh, for the moment, uh, I'm very concentrated, and uh, I think I will be I will feel better, and uh, I will uh, feel uh, uh, as if uh, it will be a victory. In two days, when I will be in the north of Malouin Island, because uh, uh, I will have a lot of wind uh, today and tomorrow again. So my psychological cape on will be uh, tomorrow evening. Everything is okay on board. Uh, I had uh, some problem in the Indian Ocean with my uh, main sail, but uh, I repair it and uh, I think it's okay. And uh, all the all the rest is uh, okay on board. There is a, there is still a long way, but uh, everything is all right. The Vendée Globe was a, was a dream for me, and uh, it's a crazy race, a crazy adventure. Uh, I have um, a competition with uh, three other competitors, three other boats, and uh, obviously with um, uh, Arnaud Boissière, so it's very interesting. 
I'm, I don't feel alone. No. So first, uh, Vendée Globe is, uh, is better. I feel safe and uh, secure. And uh, there is just this Cape on which, uh, which uh, will be a little bit difficult. And uh, after, it will be uh, just a fun uh, pleasure. Well, in other news today, uh, Enda O'Coinine, the Irish skipper who was forced out of the race on New Year's Day with a broken mast. We've got the news from him uh, from Dunedin, where he has actually set sail from Dunedin today, uh, bound for Auckland. Uh, Enda, they're leaving in true uh, style, the style that we've uh, come to uh, expect from Enda. They're uh, leaving uh, Dunedin with a little jig there. Um, he's decided he's going to put, he's put a temporary mast on Kilcullen Voyager, and uh, he now aims to find a replacement mast in Auckland and uh, hopefully he's going to complete his uh, round the world voyage on Kilcullen Voyager. There he goes sailing from uh, Dunedin there and uh, it, we uh, heard from his uh, team manager today, Marcus Hutchinson, that he is uh, just uh, pulling into uh, a port some 50, 50 miles away from Dunedin where he's going to just avoid a bit of bad weather and then he'll be back on his way to Auckland. Well, let's have a quick look at what the uh, situation is out on the race course today with our 3D animation. Um, we're going to be begin our fly through the fleet with the, the uh, four boats approaching Cape Horn there. Fabrice Amadeo in 11th place leading that group. He's under 200 miles from Cape Horn. Arnaud Boissier just two, 20 miles south of him and just under tw 200 miles behind Alan Rohrer and Rich Wilson. 1,000 miles west, Didac Costa in 15th place, maintaining that lead of 100 miles over Roman Atanasio. 800 miles behind them is Peter Harima. There he is, Peter, in 17th place. Peter today making around 12 knots of boat speed. And 1,000 miles back, Sebastian Destremo rounding off the fleet. Well, let's jump forward to the South Atlantic, where Conrad Coleman in 10th is chasing 9th place Eric Bellion. 8th place Nandor Far, making a fast passage northeast, around 16 knots today. Well, up in 7th, Louis Burton on Bureau Valet. He's today around 9,000 miles from the equator. Sorry, 900 miles from the equator. Jan Elias and uh, Jean Le Cam there in 5th and 6th. They continuing their match race. There's Jean-Pierre Dick in 4th. He's around 300 miles ahead. Speeds down to around 10 knots for Jean-Pierre. And uh, Jeremy Bayou in third place, now under 2,000 miles from the finish line as he approaches the latitude of the Canaries. And there's our leaders, Armel Leclerc and Alex Thompson, as we mentioned, split by 100 miles at the latest position report. Well, I'm very happy to say we can go live to Hugo Boss. Alex Thompson, how are conditions today? Well, it's time to go to that meeting. I'll get to the 17, Alex, you're uh, continuing to knock off miles off Armel's lead. How do you see the next, uh, the next 24 hours playing out? Well, it's going to be, uh, going to get windy. It's going to have 30 knots of wind soon. So, uh, we'll be going fast. We'll be just three hours all times out. It's not, uh, it's not like there's going to be these conditions to go fast in, but, uh, I'll still have my best, see how it's going to stand up. Well, Alex, joining us on the line today, we've got Dee Kafari uh, back in the UK. Um, Dee, have you got a question for Alex at all? Well, first of all, I just want to tell Alex that every single British person is urging him to the finish line. He's got absolutely nothing to lose. And we're just willing you all the way. And this is like the most stressful week for all of us. And the fact that he just is excited about going fast is cool. Alex, like really really huge congratulations and we're with you every minute i hope you've got enough mayonnaise to get you to the finish line please tell me you have em enough mayonnaise to be happy now, I, I, I haven't broken out my emergency bottle of mayonnaise yet. I'm just ready in the oven just in case I need it. 
Oh, it's good to hear. Everyone's going to be there with you every single mile now. And uh, we're, we're really encouraging you, Alex. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. Alex, at, th at this stage of the race, is it a case of taking every risk that you could possibly take? Or uh, do you still have to be conservative in the, in the big wins? Uh, yeah, we, we, so we still haven't really gone to any of them yet. And, uh, you know, I, I I'm not really that comfortable, you know, finding these limits right now. Yeah. So, so it's a difficult, uh, sort of just sort of juggling, actually. You know, I have to just try and, uh, so I'm doing my best. Right now I'm going to have 30, I know the wind angle is in a bit. Um, I'm not, I won't know what wind it really is because I can't measure it. It's probably a good thing. So, uh, yeah, I'll give it a shot and see what happens. And, Alex, um, how impressive has your boat been? You said before the start of the race that if ever there was a boat built that could win the Vendée Globe, this was it. How impressive has it been sailing it? Very well, can you say that again, then? A question about your boat, Alex, about Hugo Boss. You said before the start of the race that uh, it was uh, the, the best boat that you've ever sailed, that if ever there was a boat that could win the race, it was this one. How impressive has it been to sail? I think we're uh, still wishing we'd done another 10,000 miles like this we planned, and that would have happened if we hadn't gone upside down. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think it's, a, it's an amazing thing. It really is. It's just, uh, you know, like I said, I haven't found a full century. So now it's not really the time I'm really trying to move, but we are trying to move. So, uh, I don't know, we just have to see how it is. Well, Alex, we say thank you to you for, uh, for dialing in. This, this race is absolutely captivating. Everyone's, uh, everyone's watching every single position update, and um, we will continue to do so until you guys get here on Thursday. And uh, until then, we will, uh, we will say goodbye, but I'm sure we'll speak to you before the end of the race. Thanks for calling us. Thank you, Cheers, Alex. Well, uh, well, Dee, what a race this is turning into. Uh, how, how exciting is this? Huge. And what's really cool is Alex then was, like, really chilled about his boat. He's just about sailing. And I think we can't underestimate exactly what Alex's abilities have been in this race. He really has brought the Vendée Globe to the international audience. And uh, this really is making a mark. This is right up there with the level that Ellen MacArthur made in making a difference in the Vendée Globe. So, you know, really behind him. The boat's done great and he just seems to be enjoying it, communicating really well and uh, sharing his passion for what he's doing. It's fantastic. Well, um, Dee, obviously you know Alex very, very well indeed. Um, what is it about his character, that, do you think, that, that sort of allowed him to get to this stage? Well, we can't hide the fact that he's had incredible support um, with Hugo Boss and the team of people around him. But his tenacity and his drive and his belief that he, every edition he's gone out there, this is four editions of him doing the Vendée Globe. He knew he could do better than before and he knew he could deliver on the world stage. And this has been the year and it, it's great. And I know that if, if Thursday doesn't finish the way all the British supporters want it to finish, I wouldn't be surprised if he came back in four years time and did it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't surprise any of us, I don't think. Um, D, you've been at the London Boat Show the last couple of days. You were mentioning there's a, there's a, massive, uh, a massive amount of UK sailors that are following the race. What sort of a following does it get in the UK and, and elsewhere? It's really interesting. Back in 2008, when I competed, there were actually seven British skippers in the race. And we had to work really, really hard to explain what the Vendée Globe was about and to express the passion that the French feel for the race. 
And I feel that it, we still didn't do the right job. Ellen MacArthur set the stage coming second in 2000. We were there in 2008 as seven British skippers trying to make an impact. And it's taken till now with um, Alex's communication to bring it right back up into the forefront of everyone's mind. And the media have, have adopted this, the footage that we got from the French Navy in the Southern Ocean of the guys racing there, I think really helped the media drive. All the news stations took it on. And suddenly people realized there was a Brit in a round the world race doing pretty well. And now we're getting to that build up to the finish. And I think it's not only the sailing public, but actually general public aware of what's going on out there. So we're starting to step up, but there is nowhere near the level of passion for this race that you see in France. The French are phenomenal at their passion for sailing and especially the Vendée Globe. Well, uh, will we be seeing you carrying on Alex's mantle in four years time then, Dee? Well, you never say never. <laughs> As you know, I was at the show with Sam yesterday and Sam and I both have a, a long history with the Vendée Globe and a history and passion for offshore sailing. And there's always a strong part in your heart for solo offshore sailing, even though we've both been in teams now and uh, double-handed and various combinations. Um, but there's, it's such an emotive race that um, it's always there in the back of your mind should an opportunity arise. Well, Dee, we'll come back to you in, uh, in just a second, but um, Hubert, I wonder if you could give us a, a, a bit of a rundown of what the, the weather is, uh, is taking place on the, on the race course at the moment. I think we can, I think we can start by looking at those front runners um, in, the, uh, in the North Atlantic. Um, what's, uh, what's the situation? Well, we have a, we have a stand -up, pretty standard uh, situation right now in, uh, in Sabdolon, end of January, and uh, we have... Um, Either way, the storms coming and low pressures, or we have the uh, the high pressure with a with a good uh, good sun and cold weather. That's what is looking uh, on Thursday, maybe northeast condition with a um, quite uh, cold uh, temperature. But right now, uh, we see that Banque Populaire and Hugo Boss have uh, good conditions right now, sailing uh, with a southeast wind blowing 20-25 knots max, and uh, it's going to keep going like that for at least two or three days, so they is going to keep, keep the pace all the way up north to avoid this high pressure you can see on the screen, and uh, then they tack uh, straight back to uh, Les Sables Yeah, yeah. And, um, and behind them, um, the Jeremy Bayou in, in slightly lighter winds today. Um, seems like he's in a bit of a, bit of a, a light wind patch. Yeah, he has this uh, high pressure patch that uh, slows down the whole thing, so forecast would say two or three days uh, behind behind the, the two leaders, so it slowed down a little bit. Uh, nothing risky for him, but um, that's a bit of a pain for him probably, and this, we can see on the ranking that the, the speed is down. Yeah, and those three guys behind, uh, Jean-Pierre Jean Dick, Jean Le Cam, Jan Elias, they're in pretty much steady, uh, steady trade wins. Yeah, uh, not much options, strategics for them, and uh, they have the same trade wins. Uh, Saint Michel keeps, the, keeps the, his position ahead of the two, doing match racing, as you said earlier. And, uh, and this is uh, standard, uh, standard uh, conditions near uh, west of Dakar yeah. and Cap Verde. Yeah. And I think we can just show the, um, what the situation there looks like in 24 hours' time. Um, I think we, we can just then see the, uh, the fleet, uh, the, the leaders, Hugo Boss and uh, Armel Leclerc and Alex Thompson there. Um, I think we can show uh, the, the chart there. There you go. That's got the little weather, uh, weather routing on. We can see that, that blue... Um, that blue circle there, that's where we expect uh, uh, Armel Leclerc to be sort of this time tomorrow, starting to maybe perhaps drop out of that stronger wind um, as, it, as they curve around towards Les Sables. Yeah, actually this high pressure is moving north, northeast, and uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty much the scenario for Alex to catch up a little bit as Pop uh, may end up uh, with the slower speed, and uh, we can see maybe uh, the, the gap uh, getting down maybe around 30 miles away from wow. each other, which is pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> when, you have, uh, when you're in first position, you know you're being <laughs> tracked. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to be good for the, for the finish. It's going to be intense. And I know that we are 
what a, what a race. I mean, after yeah. all this, the 70 days of racing, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Well, let's, let's have a quick look at the uh, South Atlantic then. Um, uh, Louis Burton in, in lovely breeze today, uh, seem, seemingly, uh, seemingly doing, doing pretty well there in seventh place. Yes, correct. So Bureau Valley, uh, Louis Burton had good conditions and he's a bit alone. So he's trying to, uh, to uh, get these conditions east wind uh, as much as he can. And he's, uh, he's still eight days, eight days after Armel in Sable d'Olon. Yeah, yeah. And um, there you can see in that, in that bottom right hand side of the screen, the, the big depression there. Nando Far just escaping north of that. And uh, Eric Bellion and uh, Conrad Coleman have been able to just sort of skirt to the west of that big depression. Yes, indeed. It's been, uh, it's been pretty windy for Spirit of Hungary, and uh, especially for the last days now, he's, he's all right. He's, uh, he's ahead of this front, and uh, he should be able to get the, to get the, the good positions. Come on, Salom. Well, Eric is uh, getting uh, the option close to shore, and uh, we see how it ends up. Yeah. Maybe it pays, we'll see. And of course, these guys uh, going around Cape Horn, it, we're expecting sometime later today, they've got some pretty hairy conditions. Yeah, pretty gnarly out there, and uh, expecting 35, 40 knots with six meters of waves of sea state. So, um, yeah, watch and see. I guess <laughs> they have a good experience for New Rest Matmut, the first time ever is crossing Cape Horn, so uh, he's going to have a good first experience, I guess. Mikelin has been the fifth or fourth time. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, you should know what is, what's yeah. going on. Fantastic. And let's just have a look then at, at the back of the fleet then. Uh, Didac and uh, Roma, in, uh, they're just ahead of that high pressure there. Um, Peter, sort of just, to, just behind it. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much what we got in the, uh, in the Pacific so far. We see these high and lows uh, getting uh, each other like a little train. And uh, you see that some guys ahead, uh, in, in the, ahead of the front and uh, catching up with the south, w south wind, very close to the exclusion zone, and no way back. Uh, unfortunately, has to deal with this high pressure and lighter conditions, but still downwind, so yeah, still good. And, and what are we looking like in terms of uh, ETAs then in, in, in Les Sables? T tell, us, uh, tell us what the latest is. You mean for which for, boats? For, for, the <laughs> for the leaders. Yeah, for the leaders, we're still expecting uh, the 19th of January in Sable d'Olonne. And uh, it's, time is very hard to say, so we don't want to talk too quickly, but um, it's going to be a very, very close finish up, maybe up to two hours or not even uh, time difference between the two leaders. And uh, this will bring the whole uh, suspense, right? The yeah, whole, absolutely. Uh, the absolutely. Whole. Well, it's fantastic. And um, let's look just to the back of the fleet. In uh, 16th place, Roman Atanasio sent us this video. He's just passed the most remote place on the planet. He sent us this dispatch. Have a look. Chers les amis, juste pour vous dire qu'on passe à 270 000 du point Nemo. Et le point Nemo, c'est quoi Là, on le voit ici. C'est l'endroit. Voilà, ça accélère là. On a combien Un, 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 deux, un, trois. <rire> Pardon des surfs. Le point Nemo, c'est l'endroit le plus reculé de toute Terre. Voilà, sur, euh, sur la planète. Quand on est là, c'est là où on est le plus loin de, de toute terre. Voilà. Donc, euh, bah, c'est. Faut pas avoir un problème dans les parages. Voilà, voilà. Et bah, à plus tard, bye bye. Well, uh, yeah, fantastic stuff there from uh, Roman Atanasio going past the most remote part on the planet, around 17, 000, uh, 1,700 miles from any other part of land. Uh, brilliant stuff. Um, Dee, we come back to you very quickly. We're just hearing that, that uh, the guys going around Cape Horn this afternoon, they've got some pretty hairy conditions. You've obviously been around Cape Horn quite a few times yourself. What can it be like? Well, I've had conditions from the complete benign, becalmed, lovely conditions where you're frustrated because you're not moving through to an incredible storm. And in fact, my Vendée Globe was the first time the race committee actually told the three boats there to stop racing. I was with Brian Thompson and Arno Boissier, and we had a huge storm come through with us and we were trying to outrun it, deciding what to do. And the race control, Hubert will remember this, actually made the decision that we all had to stop racing until the worst had gone. So it was about four hours and all of us were edging to get going again. And there was 85 knots over Fierro del Frego, uh, Tierra del Frego, and we saw probably maximum of about 57. But uh, that's why Cape Horn is so notorious and on the sailor's bucket list because 
it's an all or nothing type of place. And um, I think for Fabrice now about to approach his first Cape Horn in some big weather, he's going to tick all the boxes for a real Cape Horn rounding. Uh, well, Fabrice, of course, a, a sports journalist who, who took up solo sailing. Um, and um, Dee, uh, finally, before we let you go, who are your bets on? Oh, well, I've got to support my, my man, the home man, Alex Thompson all the way. It's, it's there for our Mel to make the mistakes. And Alex, being the hunter, is in a stronger position. He's got nothing to lose. Third place, Jeremy is not going to catch him. And so, um, you know, let's take it all the way to the wire. I know Armel does not want the demons of the previous two editions of his runner-up place to haunt him for a third time. But wouldn't it be great if we got a Brit on the podium at the top spot? <laughs> well, Dee, listen, thank you very much for joining us again on Bombay Live. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And also thanks, of course, to uh, our sailors, Alex Thompson and Fabrice Amadeo for talking to us. Thank you to Hubert Le Monnier for giving us some expert weather advice. Thank you, Will. It's thanks always a pleasure much. to no, be with you here. <laughs> absolute pleasure. That brings to an end another Vendée Globe live show. We'll be here same time tomorrow, or 1 p.m. French time, 1200 UTC. Uh, and uh, we'll be bringing you all the news from the race course. Until then, goodbye. Good morning. Welcome on board, Foresight Natural Energy. I'm Conrad Coleman, and I'm still all alone. I haven't seen anybody, like literally seen anybody, in about six weeks since I saw Kojiro right about here when we're still heading down the South Atlantic. And for the Southern Ocean, I guess that's normal because there's nothing down there except for icebergs and penguins on icebergs. Uh, but I kind of expected to see somebody here, you know, a cargo ship or a fishing boat or uh, something. But there's nothing. There's still nothing. If I hadn't received an email from my wife this morning, I could well think that I was the last man on earth. Traces of planes in the sky. There's just me and my environmentally friendly racing boat. <laughs> it's still pretty cool though. Hi everybody, well, uh, it's uh, Sunday, about Sunday lunchtime. Boat's on fire! We're going fast, currently 26, 25, 26, 27, 27, 6, 25. You can see there's a lot of water pouring over, that's why I've got the Wendy house shut. And things are pretty good, the sea conditions aren't fantastic for going fast, I have to say. And it's quite puffy, I'm getting... Uh, down at debt level I'm getting from 16 up to 24 knots so it's not ideal but uh, I'll give it my best shot conscious not to uh, go too mad so I'm gonna have to be quite attentive over the next uh, 24 48 hours but let's uh, have to give it a crack eh? I hopefully I'll be within a hundred miles and have a shot certainly I'm gonna give it a go